Hi, thank you for coming to Highway Chain here on Beeducation.com. The project you're going to learn today is what I consider to be an intermediate level project. It takes a little bit of mastery of the coiling plier, which is a tool that some of you may or may not have used in the past. One recommendation I'd like to make is that you practice the technique a few times with some copper wire before starting with your sterling. You could even make one all out of copper if you wanted a lot of practice. Some of the samples that we've shown you in the video have been oxidized when they're finished or I've built them in with wire that I oxidized to start with. So it takes a little extra time to polish them, but because the coils are very small and there's a lot of tiny detail on these, it really highlights the details and all of the hard work that you did when you put the bracelet together to put a little color into it. So have fun with your highway chain. Let's get on the road. The tools and supplies that you're going to need for highway chain are 18 gauge wire, 26 gauge wire, make sure it's dead soft, a short piece of 20 gauge wire, flat nose pliers, chain nose pliers, flush cutters, coiling pliers, a permanent marker, size 15 seed beads, size 11 seed beads, and we're working with triangles today. You can use a size eight, a triangle, or something in that size range, in the two to three millimeter size. The first thing I wanna go over is how to use the coiling plier. It's an unusual plier. I know a lot of people who own one, but they've never ever tried using it before, so nobody's really quite sure of how it works. When you put your wire into the plier, you want it to line up with whatever tier of the blade you're coiling on. You don't want it to be lining up with the side of the plier. I normally position it just like it is here so that I'm looking at the end of the wire and I can see where it is. When you start to actually use the plier, turn, doing all the work with the plier. Don't use the plier to hold the wire and bend it with your fingers. Use the plier to bend the wire. That way you get a nice snug wrap around the plier. One thing that you should take note of for this project, when you look here on the screen, you notice this is three different pairs of coiling pliers, and you notice that there's a pretty big variation in the size of the end of the top tier, and that's the tier we're working on for this project. So when you get to the next section, and I'm talking about rolling the uh, wire until you see the end come back up, your, you may end up rolling a little further or a little less depending on the size of the actual top tier of your plier. So bear in mind that this is a cast tool and so there is a little bit of a variation in the size of the plier. Make sure when you're cutting all of your wire for this project that you flush trim each and every end of your wire so that you've got a nice clean cut. It's very critical on this bracelet to make sure the cuts are clean and that you don't have any sharp pointy ends. So in front of you are several samples of the highway chain. There's not a huge variation in the type of beads that are used in these pieces. This is the piece that you're going to see me make in the video itself. Um, and this piece is pretty much the same, except that instead of triangles in here, I've used one and a half millimeter cubes in it. Um, in the case of this bracelet, I've actually used a combination of seed beads and some three millimeter glass pearls. And in some cases, I'm actually passing twice through the glass pearl instead of keeping both rows separate. You could also, if you're a big bead and no small beads person, double through larger beads all the way down the center of the highway chain. But I recommend doing your first one with the seed beads. It's a, they're a little bit easier to work with and they fit easily in. You will notice when we set these down on the table that they naturally fall into an arc. And if you pick them up and wiggle them, you can see that they're kind of springy. That's exactly the, that's exactly the way you want them to behave. And in the world of care and feeding of your finished bracelet, it's good to store them in a, little, in a little arc like this 
don't you don't want to flatten them out if you flatten them out you're going to stretch that center lattice and the bracelet won't last as long so the first three instructions on your worksheet discuss cutting and marking your wire because you're going to have to cut and put marks on each and every piece of wire now that sounds and can be a little tedious so i'm going to show you a way to make it a little bit easier I take a piece of paper, a fancy piece of cardboard, and some tape. Once I've cut my wire and gotten it kind of flat, I slide it so that the end of the wire sits flush up against the piece of cardboard, and I cut all my pieces and stick them in here in this fashion. Then I measure from the edge of the piece of cardboard to wherever the mark needs to go. I mark the piece of wire on each end, and then I just use my ruler to draw a straight line from one mark to the other mark on the other end. That way you can mark multiple pieces of wire and it goes a lot faster. One other recommendation that I'd like to make to everyone is that when you print out your instructions, make sure you print them out at 100%. Do not use a fit to page or the rulers that I've placed on the instructions themselves will not be the right size. If you're not familiar with the metric system, just use the rulers on the pages. They are exact to size. Once you've cut and marked each one of the pieces of wire, you're going to start bending, but you're only going to do the first bend on each piece. To do this, I'm using flat nose pliers because I get a much squarer corner this way. I'm right-handed, so I'm grabbing just to the right of the mark with my plier and bending the plier over. That way the mark ends up square on the corner of the piece. And you can see I've overbent it a little bit, so it's kind of an sh extra sharp instead of a 90, which is totally fine. Once you've bent all the pieces, this is exactly what you sh it should look like after you've completed this instruction. Don't put in the second bends. It really won't do you any good and it's going to make this impossible to put together. So you just want to bend everything into an L shape. It doesn't matter which end you come in from to, to bend it at the 30 millimeter mark because it's actually 30 mil millimeters from both ends. So now we're going to be doing the next step, which when it's completed will look just like what's in my hand. Once you've bent all of your pieces at the 30 millimeter mark, get out your coiling plier and go to the first tier on the plier, line up with the blade, not the outside, the inside blade, and begin turning, always turning away from yourself. As you bring the end around to begin forming the coil, bring it around on the downside so that you're bringing it around toward this long piece of wire. That way the coil forms down toward the rest of the piece. As soon as you start to see the end coming back toward you around the plier, stop. Take the plier out and that's what your piece should look like. So now we're going to work with the 60 millimeter piece marked at the 27 and 33 millimeter mark. Grabbing to the right of my mark, bending a good 90. Come back in with your coiling plier. This time as I bring the end around, I'm going to bring it around on this side to coil to the outside of the L. coiling around until I can see my end emerging again. I'm going to my other mark, make a good 90. And this one is going to mirror image. So when I coil on this one, I'm going to coil to the outside. So bringing my end around on the outside. Continuing to coil till I see the end emerge again. And there's the clasp loop. So 
So now that you have your class loop formed and you've bent all of your other segments, it's time to start putting the bracelet together. So for the first link, you're just gonna slide that baby right through the, both of the coils. And sometimes, I, sometimes I'll squish this in a little bit. All of the pieces end up being wedged in. So I'm gonna get in there, find my mark, grab next to the mark, bend the piece over. If you feel like you're squeezing the coils in on the previous one, just move your plier a little further out. There's a little room for variation in this. So you're gonna get a nice 90 in there. And then you're gonna coil this piece, same as you did with all the other ones. Start to coil. Bring your end around on the inside. Continue coiling around until you see that end emerge. And so that you kind of want it to match the length on the other side. I always just match the length whether or not I'm matching on the coil. You can always trim off extra. And so that's what your first two links hooked together are going to look like. So now we're going to add the center lattice that the beads are strung on. Using a piece of 26 gauge wire, I'm putting the ends together, sliding my hand down, and just making a little fold at the end of the wire. So once you've folded the wire, you just kind of want to slide the loop past one. Grab your ends and put them back through that wire loop. We're making a lark's head knot here. It's just a little harder to do it with wire than it is to do it with thread or cord. This is the step that always takes everybody a little bit of time to get this piece on here. Don't be in a hurry as you put this, as you put this piece on. Just realize that you're gonna have to pull and adjust a little bit to get the wire on. Sometimes I'll slide just, I'll pull on just one side of the wire to see if I can get it to move nicely for me and pull this loop a little tighter. So as you can see, I've managed to finagle and pull it tight. You don't have to worry, if this, one's, if this first loop on here is a little bit loose, that's okay. You might have a different bead count going across your first link, but don't even worry about it. Remember, it's the two and a half foot rule. If anybody's getting that close to check it out, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some people say they're just asking to be slapped. So you can see that it's just on there and it's tightened down. And the nice thing about this is it's permanently attached to this and it can't come unwound as you're working on it. So it keeps the wire nicely anchored. That's the whole point of going through the trouble to put it, put it in here with the lark's head knot. So I don't string any beads onto the lattice until after I've put in the next section. And then you're just gonna have to deal with this wire being on here for now. So you're gonna put in your next link Come in with your plier, and I've squeezed this previous link together a little bit. If you feel like you can't get your plier to where the mark is on the next section, just go ahead and squeeze the previous link gently. You don't want to overdo it. Come in, grab next to your mark, bend it over. And coil. All right, I've coiled it around and it matches the previous one. If they're at all uneven, I just go in and coil a little more to even the links up. Okay, so now we're ready for seed beads because you have a place to attach them when you come across. Normally when I do this, I create a taper that goes from small beads to large beads and then back to small as I come across the square. Not that there's, not, not that there's a lot of space in this link. You're not putting on a ton of beads 
And you really do want to work with small beads when you do this. It's great to want to put some larger beads in, but they're just going to get in your way. And you have two, two rows sitting right next to each other, so you really don't have a ton of space in here. So I'm stringing a sequence on. You want the sequence to be able to sit easily in between the wires. If you have a little bit of exposed wire, that's actually a good thing, not a bad thing when you're doing this part. So now I'm going to wrap this wire around. And I normally wrap to the outside. So I'm wrapping from where I am toward the edge of the bracelet. And I'm going to wrap around solid one time with that wire. And then I'm going to repeat that string. The nice thing is, is once you've determined on the first wire what the stringing pattern is, all you're going to have to do on the second one is repeat the exact same string pattern. So I put on a 15, an 11, a triangle, an 11, and a 15. So from small to large, and back to small. Scooch them on there. A lot of times it's easier for people, instead of bringing the end around each time, to actually push a loop back up through. Most people get less kinks pushing a loop through than they do bringing the end around in it like a needle and thread style. So you can see that I've gotten both of my rows in there. I've wrapped once on, e on each of the lattice wires and everything's anchored going across the link. So as you can see, I've continued to build links onto this chain. The same, all of them go in the exact same way. You slide it in, you bend it back, and then once you've got your next link in, you can go ahead and put your lattice in. You can see I've got this one bent and ready to go and I'm ready to wrap put my beads on and wrap my lattice right here. On the sections that I've put in here, because there's always a little variation on how you bend each link, sometimes your, your stringing pattern is different. And on, in the case of this one, the stringing pattern has been a little bit different as, as I've gone across each and every link. And here, like I left a lot of exposed wire here. You can actually see quite a bit. And I probably could have fit another 15 on there. But like I said before, I'd rather have it be loose too loose than too tight because if it's too tight it's going to mess up the movement. Once you, As I put in each link I like to take the bracelet and actually bend it and flex it back and make sure that everything's able to move. If you do this each time you do it that means your wire is not going to be pulled too tight. If you leave this flat like this the whole time you're doing it and you don't allow some flexibility in the bracelet at some point you're going to actually put enough tension on that 26 gauge lattice in the middle to snap it. So now that I have finished the body of my bracelet, which in this case is 17 main lengths of chain, and that's not I'm not counting the clasp loop in that. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my piece of 20 gauge that I cut to 70 millimeters, same length as all of our other pieces and following the same procedure I normally do. I'm going to bend a nice square, 90 degree corner here. And then I'm going to slide it through the end link of my chain. Once I've done that, I'm going to flip it and go ahead and put in that second bend. That just keeps everything nice and secure. Okay, so now that I have this piece in and I've wrapped the last uh, the last couple of beads across, I'm going to go ahead and start building the clasp hook out of, this, out of this piece of wire. One of the things that I do right away normally on this is if that's really, if when I've bent it, the ends are really uneven and one's a lot longer than the other, I just trim them to match here. In this case, they match quite fine, so I'm just going to leave them be. So I'm reach, now I'm going to work with regular chain nose on this because the flat nose are a little too big to do this. So you're going to grab a little ways out, bend up and in, and then repeat the same operation on the opposite side so that your wires are 
crossing over each other and there's kind of a little rectangular box here. And then just as a point of reference, you don't have to do this, but I find it very helpful. I actually take my permanent marker and mark both of the wires in about the center of the bracelet. Again, it's just for reference. Then I'm going to grab next to that mark, or pretty much I like to grab on the mark. It's one of the reasons I put it in there because you need a little bit of distance between these pieces and it's okay if there's some gap. I'm going to bend that up. Same thing on the opposite side. Grab it and bend it up so that I end up with the two pieces sitting kind of next to each other. You might have to get in here and do a little bit of uh, fix up on it. So I did a little cleanup and perfected the bends and made sure everything was coming out nice and even on this. And as you can see, at this point, one of my wires actually is longer than the other. And you know, at any point during the process, if they're really uneven, you can just take them and trim them. Now using my coiling pliers, I'm going to set everything, I'm going to set it in here and I normally line the back up about where the box is because that's, that's about the right proportion. You can scoot it down just a little bit. And then I'm just going to pull the wires up and over the plier to make my hook. And you can see I've got the hook started. And then I'm going to come in with, I just come in with chain nose. You could do it with round nose, but I think it's easier to do this little fold at the end with the chain and just roll your end over to make kind of a neat little loop. And then repeat the same operation on the other side. And if you pull it out of shape like you just watched me do, just get back in, tidy everything up, and make sure that the shape on your hook is really nice. So I continued to do a little perfecting on the shape on this hook to make it look really nice. So once you've gotten it all shaped together, and the other thing I'll say is don't be afraid to be a little rough on it because in the end, we wrap most of it with wire. So if you nick it up a little bit, nobody will be able to see. And again, it's the two and a half foot rule. So I'm gonna string two size 15 seed beads. and then I'm gonna wrap around the opposite side of the box. I'm gonna do that with both of my wires to start with here. So anchoring that into place. And I usually wrap one over and wrap it out to the outside and then when I put my second one on, I wrap it into the inside toward the hook. So that it just, and you know, it's not a real noticeable detail but it does actually make a little bit of a difference on the overall bracelet. So now that I've gotten this wrapped and anchored, I'm gonna start actually just wrapping one of the wires around the hook. You want to try and keep it pretty flat while you're doing this. And when you're working with a gauge like 26, what we're using here, if you wrap it around and pull it into position and then pull it back out, slide it up through the hook and put it in there, your wire is much more likely to fall into place exactly where you wanted it to go instead of getting caught or getting in the way or pulling crooked. So you can see this is keeping it neat, nice and tidy. And I'm just gonna keep on wrapping until I get all the way around the hook. And then I'll show you what to do at the end. So once I've wrapped all the way up and around the hook, my wire is nice and snug, I'm actually gonna tuck it through the little loop on the top of my hook and pull it snug with my pliers. So it's kind of embedded down in that hook. And then I'm just gonna Turn it up close in there, and usually they don't come out, they'll usually stay in there. As far as the other wire that I'd wrapped up onto the box here, I'm gonna wrap it a couple more times, like two or three more times, and then just trim the wire here. I'm gonna call it good. 
I like to trim it nice and close and if I feel like it's sticking up at all I'll get in and squeeze that end down with my chain nose pliers so it's nice and snug. If at any point while you're making this, while you're installing the lattice in this bracelet, if your 26 gauge breaks, if you work hard in it, or if you're rough with it, um, you can start from the beginning end and install a new lattice. It's just a lot harder to put the lattice in when, when they're all the links are closed. That's one of the reasons I have you put it in as you build it. But if you ever have an accident where your lattice doesn't make it through the whole production process, that's fine. If you have a much larger, if your wrist is larger than about seven inches, you might actually want to use, I would say, three and a half feet of wire for the lattice of the 26 gauge instead of just the three feet. This, in this case, this is about, this is about a seven inch bracelet, maybe slightly larger. And you saw I had a little bit left over on the end to trim off.